Let's bring in the head coach of the Western Hockey League champion Edmonton Oil Kings, Derek Laxdahl, who also goes by former Wheat King, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let you carry the Edmonton colors right now. Hey, uh, Derek, as a, as a head coach, your last game was against Valdor. How much do you tweak your lineup or your game plan for tonight compared to what you learned on uh, on Tuesday night? Well, the, the big thing for us with our lineup here tonight, we'll, we'll go with the same lineup that we had, but our game plan will tweak a little bit, um, obviously to prepare for Bebo a little bit. And obviously for, you know, they uh, they had a plan for check with some soft chips going back on our defensemen. And, you know, the one thing that we've learned through the last two Memorial Cups we've been in in the last uh, two years is the style of play has really changed and we have to adapt a little bit more from a possession game to a little bit more of just an outlet game, getting pucks out of the D zone and pressuring and, and trying to create some of those turnovers that you just forementioned. I'm going to, you're playing the Brandon card. I'll play the leaf card. Cause we from that, he went Good on point. the Toronto yeah. Maple Leaf organization all those years, Derek. So great uh, catching up with you again and congratulations on all your success. I, I would think the other part, you're talking the technical side, whoever wins the game. And I know you're hoping it's you, uh, the emotional side is probably one thing the team will have momentum wise against Guelph. But if you can get there, that's something you got to try to bottle. Well, it is. You know what? Uh, this game's going to be huge. Obviously, it's an elimination game for both teams, but and then the team that gets through is going to have a little bit of that momentum going into the final. But uh, you saw a really good Guelph team, and and they're they're a good hockey club. But you can force them to defend a little bit, and they will take some penalties. And uh, but the one question mark on that hockey club that uh, guys are kind of wondering going into the tournament was Nichols. And I thought he's been one of the best goaltenders. He was outstanding against London. So whoever gets through to that final is going to have a huge task, and you're going to have to rely on a little bit of that momentum from tonight's game. Hey, Derek, when you know... Just turn your mic back on. It is on. Oh, oh it just right. came back on. It did, yes. I, I coughed earlier. <laughs> um, Derek, when, when you're actually defending against a, a team that's going to do soft chips and obviously have an overload coming through the middle trying to chase down those pucks, when you defend it, do you... Do you tell your first defenseman who actually retrieves the puck to actually take the you know the contact, or is it a, is it as much as changing sides on the, on the puck trying to avoid the forecheck? Well, it's a little bit of both. The uh, the thing for us obviously is to have some back pressure, you know, between the blue line and the red line before you get to that halfway point, and then once they do get that chip and that that offside defense is going to have to stagger to a point where he can get back and those puck. They're obviously trying to keep it away from Tristan Jari who's a very good puck handler. And then, you know, we, we went over some clips last night on different depths of where the puck's being chipped and different options for a hockey club. And, you know, our guys just, uh, we've been through it once in the first game against Valdor, so now we'll be a little bit more experienced going back. And the one thing with our hockey club is we really like to be a possession team. We like to use the middle of the ice on our breakouts, but uh, we're being forced into a little bit of different play. And, you know, if you look at the first goal we gave up the other night, we got uh, – we could have pushed the puck up early in the wall. We pushed it back in behind our net, and we weren't willing to use a rim. We wanted to go through the middle of the ice and ended up on our net. So we're going to have to to adjust, and we're going to have to get back quicker on pucks for to be successful. Derek Laxdahl is with us from the Western Hockey League champion Edmonton Oil Kings in the MasterCard Memorial Cup for the second time in three years, looking to advance to the final tonight with a win over the QMJHL title holders, the Valdor for Ur. Uh, do you, did you have last change on Tuesday? No, we didn't. They had they had home ice. We had home ice for the first two games. And okay. They had it on Tuesday, and they've got it again tonight. So you'll, you'll, you don't have to adjust in that scenario when you, when you're trying to match up against Anthony Mantha. You, you're you're going into the same type of uh, scenario. Yes, we are. You know what? Uh, they run that line pretty hard, and you know we're pretty confident with uh, Dyson Mayo and uh, Cody Corbett that second pairing. If we get caught against the wrong matchup, we're fine with what we have, but. For us, uh, you know, Griffin Reinhardt, I, I think he played over 35, 40 minutes with a double overtime the other night. So he, uh, he he manages his ice time very well, and he can play those heavy minutes if he has to, you know, do a double shift. But uh, I thought that was a great matchup the other night. I thought uh, Matha was more physical than you've probably seen him in the tournament. And, uh, you know, I thought the coach said it well. He thought he played a very pro game. And I think tonight you're going to see that same matchup, that same same style of game. Derek, what, one thing in the, in the bigger picture, I, I'm curious that you're, you know, it's been a battle to have junior teams succeed in big cities, big markets. And for whatever reason, the Western League has had a, um, a good recipe. I know there's been good teams in Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton by and large, but why is it clicking now where it's been so difficult, say, in Toronto and was difficult out west a couple of decades ago? Well, you know, the, the big thing for the, uh, we've got a great organization, the Oilers own us and the staff that we have, 
um, is, is just they do an outstanding job of finding that that free agent player that can step in the lineup and play a, i.e. a Cordy Corbett, uh, Tyler Robinson, their lineup. So with the draft being so young, you've got to find the, the odd gem. And I think that Randy Hanch and Bob Green have done a great job. And you look at the Portland Winterhawks, the, the free agent kid that they've brought or have gotten in in the late rounds out of the States have just, uh, you know, taken that step. But everybody wanted to be the Cantaloupe's Blazers of the, you know, the, the 80s and 90s. Everybody wanted to be the Calgary Hitmen of the, of the 2000s. And just so, you know, guys are doing a much better job. And if you look at the coaching ranks in the all junior leagues, I think the, the coaching fraternity is outstanding. Derek, I was at Rexall Place a couple months ago, maybe a month and a half ago with the Buffalo Sabres, and um, I saw your players, you know, you, the, when you practice in the afternoons, um, they come in, and obviously there's a ping pong table out in the, in the hallway where the guys are playing. I, I saw you standing talking to the media, but how much, how much of an advantage do you believe it is that they get to see these NHL players on a daily basis leaving their locker rooms, whether they're home, home players or, or visiting teams, and they have that interaction with the pros, and they're able to watch and and learn and and be in their presence. Because I believe marinating in that presence um, is is great for development. Well, I think it's uh, I think it's a great advantage to have for for a young kids coming through. And you know, everybody wants to play in the National Hockey League. When you see that NHL team every day, and you you watch their practice habits, and our kids get a chance to watch pregame skates from from both the NHL teams, and they get a chance to watch the Oilers in the morning, the kids that are in school, but you know, to see what they do every day and we get a chance to work out in their gym and they get a chance to interact with the kids and the NHL players that are walking by going from practice. So I think it's huge, especially for the young kids that uh, that have an aspiration to play in there. And then for the older kids, like the 18- and 19-year-olds, players like Curtis Lazar and Griffin Reinhardt, they really get a chance to round out uh, who they are as a person and player to uh, to make it to the next level because you can tell them, tell your so you're blue in the face, but until they see that, you know, it's going to take these workouts, these extra bike rides, and they see the NHL players doing it, and I think it's uh, it's a huge advantage. Too bad you changed your number because I sent you a couple of texts and you never got back to me, so obviously you did not pay oh, me I on did. that. Oh, I did. I had blocked. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. You're not big in Brandon <laughs> no, anymore. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really... Back, no one's getting back to you from I'm Brandon. I'm really struggling with my, uh, with my homies. Uh, uh, good luck. I'm rooting for you, and uh, hopefully that you can get it done. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the time.